you're a student, back to school shopping season is upon you. And getting yourself a brand new laptop is a huge part of that. Now over the past week, I've been using the new Microsoft Surface Go 2. And for my unboxing video, I've been getting a lot of comments from people about how this would work as a laptop for schoolwork. So in this video, I'm going to go over the Surface Go 2 in four categories that I think matter most to students. Portability, productivity, entertainment and battery life. When it comes to portability, the Surface Go 2 shines with the keyboard attached to super lightweight at only 1.75 pounds. I took this on long walks and it feels only slightly heavier than a water bottle. Now as a frame of reference, I went to the largest university in Ireland and carrying the £4.15 inch MacBook genuinely entered the void of it not being viable for daily use. Which is actually why back then I bought this used 12 inch MacBook. The Surface Go is lighter than this, so trust me when I say this is the dream portability computer. That said, if you move around a lot and you use your laptop in random places, lapability is still kind of the kryptonite when it comes to the Surface Go 2. Now it does quite well when you're leaning and like perching, like in that type of position. But if you're going to use this on your knees and kind of like that, it's gonna fall over. Another thing you're going to have to get used to is the 10 and a half inch screen. No matter what, this is going to be a much smaller computer than anything you've ever used before. This brings us to productivity where the Surface Go 2 excels. <laughs> get it? You get the joke, right? With the full power of Windows 10 and Microsoft Office, full programs just isn't an issue. Taking Windows 10 out of S mode will allow you to install it. While most of my peers preferred using Google Docs in college, I actually really liked Word because adding bibliographies and references to my essays was easy. And Word makes it easy to keep track of references even compared to Cite This For Me. If you're a finance student, having the full version of Excel on your laptop and macros in VBA is a no-brainer. I find the keyboard pleasant to use, but I'm going to be quite modest and say that I was given smaller hands. If you're in a position where you have larger hands, I'd probably wait for those retail stores to reopen over the next few months and try out the Surface Go keyboard for yourself. Because this is a small laptop, it's about the same size as those old 10-inch netbooks. I comfortably typed 1500 words in one sitting. I wrote the script for this video and I did the subtitling on a future video for this channel, which is an experience similar to taking notes while your lecture is presenting in class. Unfortunately, I did not get a service pen for this review, but OneNote would allow you to take notes using such a pen. The webcam was also fantastic and is positioned in the correct angle, and I had a very nice experience using it on a Zoom conference call. Frankly, I looked the best out of everyone on the screen thanks to that amazing camera. Those on call had no issues understanding me with the built-in microphone, although I was wearing headphones during the experience. It does have a headphone jack, but it's such a small wireless computer, it just works so much better when your accessories are wireless too. And it has Bluetooth, so it'll work with anything. I want to circle back to the screen though, because it is only 10 and a half inches. If you plan on using this as your main laptop and tablet, and you use a computer for hours every day, I can see you really soon buying an external keyboard, mouse and monitor for the Surface Go 2. I actually encountered an issue with my Surface Go 2 model where it wouldn't connect to my USB-C monitor with the tablet beeping and making the screen flicker. I couldn't replicate the issue on the iPad, MacBook or MacBook Pro isolating the issue to the Surface Go. I contacted Microsoft for comment and was referred to technical support. I'll keep you updated over the next few weeks if the issue does get fixed. USB-C hubs also behaved strangely, but my USB-C flash drive surprisingly worked okay. Using a USB-C hub, I did eventually manage to connect an external monitor with HDMI after fiddling around. Samuel Gibbs from The Guardian reviewed the same model Surface Go 2 as mine, and his worked with a 4K USB-C monitor, so this might be an isolated issue with my specific unit. The good news is, if you get it to work, the Surface Go works great in this setup. It was even able to drive this 4K monitor, and I found it really enjoyable that I was able to watch 4K movies on the bigger screen. And if I wanted to get some work done, I could use the big screen for that while playing Netflix on the Surface screen. If the issues I experienced are specific to my model and it's not a factory issue, it's a great way to use the Surface Go 2 and transform it. This brings us to entertainment and essentially how well does it perform as a tablet? And when I first got my hands on it, my first impression was that I really liked the speakers. And after extensive Netflix and Spotify testing, I, st I do stand by that. 
But what I will say is, while they're loud enough to fill a small room, like a dorm or a bedroom, they're not gonna be loud enough, for example, if you're having a house party, you know, you're still probably gonna want your Bluetooth speaker for that. The screen is a joy to look at with great colors for an entry-level device. And with 400 nits of brightness, it shines as bright as a MacBook Air at half the price. And the touchscreen is nice and responsive when browsing in tablet mode. I never had performance issues when it came to social media or any form of video playback. I even had no trouble watching YouTube videos in 4K to get extra detail as the website offers a bad bit rate at 1080p. There will be another video about gaming and doing intense tasks on the Microsoft Surface Go 2, so subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for that video. But suffice to say, Microsoft does not advertise this for those purposes, and there is a fanless Pentium Gold processor inside. If you want a gaming device, consider a traditional PC laptop or get an iPad with an app store full of games that were designed to be played on it, like Fortnite. That said, I tested casual games like The Sims 4 and they actually ran remarkably well on the Surface Go 2. With all the work and play, we eventually get to battery life. And this is where you need to decide for yourself whether or not it's a deal breaker, because there's no getting around it. Battery life on the Microsoft Surface Go 2 is not great. In fact, it's probably the worst part of owning a Surface Go. Doing regular computing like web browsing, Netflix and script writing, you'd be lucky to get six hours and oftentimes I got usually between four to five. If this is going to be about your laptop for work and a tablet for entertainment, I can imagine you charging this once or twice a day. I use this as my tablet for the past few days and like many of us would watch Netflix before falling asleep. And it's only human that sometimes you'd forget to turn off the device. Whereas on my iPad, I'd wake up and I might have lost 25% of its charge, I noticed the Surface Go 2 would lose more than 70%, meaning if you had a full day of classes ahead of you, it would need a solid hour on the charger before you began your day. It really boils down to habit. Because I've used so many tablets over the past few years that have amazing battery life, I've kind of always known to only charge them once every few days. Whereas with the Surface Go 2, you're going to have to treat it more like your smartphone. That means it needs to be charged every night while you sleep, and it might even need to be charged in the afternoon if you're going for all day computing. This is a great laptop tablet combination for students, but you also need to be aware that you are paying a premium. The mid-range tablet with keyboard sent me back 740 euro or 650 US dollars. For that price, you could find a traditional laptop with a much faster Intel i5 processor but you won't find anything else that combines the portability of a tablet with the productivity of having a desktop operating system. If having both is what you're looking for, then the Surface Go 2 is a great fit. If you have any questions about using the Surface Go 2, leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you or even make a video about it. Because on that note, there's still a lot more Surface Go 2 coverage to come. So subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to stay tuned for those videos. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up. But other than that, you know, hope you guys stay safe and stay well. There's an unboxing video on my channel. You can check that out if you want to. But other than that, you know, have a good week and I'll see you all soon. Bye.